the questions that they need to work through, they can only work through by facing each other again. No one else in the world can verify that experience and no one else can help Una face her question, was it love or was it abuse? Certainly it was, was maybe both, but her to try and unpack that question. I'd staged the play in, in German in 2005 at the Schaubühne Theatre in Berlin, so I, I kind of knew the, the guts of the play and kind of beat by beat how the, how the play worked. In, in the, the play is kind of one of the most extraordinary uh, two-handers and one of the most extraordinary chamber plays of, of, of recent years. It's, it's relentlessly tense verbal boxing match, and David often writes in the play in a, in a, um, in a very broken syntax that we don't try and mimic here and um, when I came to the project there, were, there was uh, already an extraordinary screenplay from David that had begun to open up the play um, for the screen and um, I guess the question is how do you get it out of that room of the play which is pretty much the scenes you see in the lunchroom, how, how do you leave the, the claustrophobia of that room and as David and I began to work together I, I think the, the clue for me was in the question of time and the way that in the, the theatre the play works for, for this verbal sparring and this act of rhetoric. You know, the two people are in the room, the audience are on the other side, they're breathing the same air as the, the two actors playing out the role and they just have, have words to kind of gouge into the, into the past and try and find out what really happened between them. And I think the, it was interesting for me as a... a theatre director approaching film for the first time, how, how do you enter the cinema space? And that became the question of time. And that's such a key question in this story. Two people who 15 years ago, something happened between them that, that shattered both of their lives and they left scar tissue in both of their lives. And the way that, that cinema can show an emotional experience of duration and time and memory and the way that the present is interrupted by the past. I think that really became our, our, our invitation into what it would be. And then over the process of the filmmaking, the question of... The play begins, the first line of the play is a shock and it begins pretty much when they dra drag, she's dra he drags her into that, that, that lunchroom. It became interesting to show the, her approach to, the, to, to that, that meeting, show the, some suggestions about her life at that point and at the end of the film to show the conditions of, of, of his life. And that, I think, opened up something that's inherent in the play and that's underneath the play, but that the film can explore in a different way, which is her journey to retrieve her past her confrontation with him in order to understand that past and the unlocking in him of memories that have been buried and a name, Una, that has been buried in him for a long time. And, and David, for you, uh, revisiting uh, a work that you had already, you know, very successfully uh, delivered and rethinking it into this uh, new form, were there shifts in perspective for you? Were there changes uh, with the way you thought about the characters and about the actions between them? Uh, yeah, I think the um, the most pressing thing was the the abs absolute um, uh, terror of keeping it in that same room and realizing that uh, I think initially I thought I thought I can't do it. I can't keep it in that room. But then I thought actually no, let's take it out. Let's 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 a move beyond that, and actually, I was helped by Benedict in this. And that, uh, you know, he was always going, "Well, you know, the play's the play. Let's just leave it as that, and let's let's create something else. Let's let's go into uh, into cinematic mode." Um, so we, you know, it, it was really difficult to go out into the world of these two characters because it's like there's all sorts of new pressures. But they, but it kind of it felt the right thing to do to bring more pressures on them in, in with more air, the less air there was. If you know what I mean, you know. So that was the that was the the real kind of um, task for us, and I, uh, and I, you know, I, I lived with that play for ten years, and I, you know, I'm sick of it now, to be honest. But <laughs> I, well, I can see that. Come on, it's my play. I can see that. <laughs> and um, you know, this is this is something new. We, I mean, we and we changed the title as well. We we did, you know, we, we we wanted to create something new, right, together. And I think I hope we did that. Well, that, that idea of, of air is also, I think, you, you know, there's a sense of um, breathlessness and breathing and the, and the space and desire for that that comes through in the work as well. And certainly I feel like that translates into the audience experience of watching it and certainly did for me.
Ben, can I ask you about, um, you, you know, your involvement, how you came to the work, but also how you approach this character of Ray, who, um, you know, is a very slippery character, very, uh, very difficult to understand uh, what might motivate him and who he might be. Certainly. Um, uh, Benedict and I had worked in Australia before. Um, I knew of the play, but I had not seen it, nor had I read it. Benedict and Rooney were doing it. Benedict sent it to me, and I, uh, you know, I devoured it. Um, uh, and it was, uh, I was extremely uh, excited by the prospect of doing it. So it was a very, you know, please may I. And um, and in terms of in terms of trying to place Ray, I have a theory with characters that may or may not be telling the truth. Uh, it seems to me that most good liars um, <clears throat> sound pretty, pretty much the same as people that are telling the truth. So, I, 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 so, you know, whether or not and how Ray feels that central question of whether it's this or that, it seems to me would be very there'd be very little difference between someone that authentically fell in love and someone that wanted to tell someone that they authentically fell in love. So that is, uh, that's, that's the approach to that. Can I ask about, um, you, you know, the, the, the process of, uh, of actually working with uh, Rooney and, and Ben Benedict for you? Um, did, you know, was everything, did you work directly from the finished script or was there work that you did together to kind of uh, develop uh, the there was, characters? There was certainly work we, we did together. Um, the script was incredibly tight and something that, that um, David and I, uh, we'd laboured over what to keep from the play, what to put in, but we kind of left that question open at times with, with Ben and Rooney during the process. Uh, there were times when they maybe discovered a scrap of something that they'd remembered from the play and we, we left the space to, to work it in. Um, and um, we didn't really rehearse very much. We didn't really kind of, I didn't really didn't want to overanalyze it. It's the, both the characters um, meet each other again with, with so much history and so much baggage that we're discovering. But that first meeting, there's just, it, it's so loaded. There's so much underneath it. Um, we, we, we knew that, we had to recognise that, we had to be aware of it, but to, to talk about it would start to unpack the mystery that had to be unpacked in front of the camera. So this is really a story about um, a couple who, both in the criminal relationship when, when she was young and when, she, when he comes, she comes to see him again now, this couple are defined by their closing off of the world from other people, they're in a kind of bubble always. It happens throughout the film, even in the driveway at the end with the other people looking down, they're closed off. Underneath the water in the swimming pool, up on the, the Ferris wheel, they had to live by codes and secrets and this relationship was kind of nihilistically private. Mm. Um, and that's the kind of experience in the uncomfortable experience of the film is getting close to two people who the questions that they need to work through, they can only work through by facing each other again. No one else in the world can verify that experience and no one else can help Una face her question, was it love or was it abuse? Certainly it was, was maybe both, but her to try and unpack that question. Or her question that he tries to answer at the end, was I the only one? Um, and there's something about that experience of a couple in, in a bubble that I think we tried to maintain and recognise in, in filming it. I was extremely blessed to have such brave actors who had a, made a kind of, I think, an unspoken contract with each other through their trust of the material and their love of the material and their taking these characters' ambiguities extremely seriously. Um, there was a kind of contract when they were playing the scenes together to to let each other go further, to encourage each other to go further. So I, I think it was just about where the camera was in those particular rooms to keep that sense of that, that, that bubble and that um, movement between a very painful intimacy at times and then a kind of objective framing. Well, that, that sort of shifting, that kind of sense of... 
um, you, you know, these are two people who have uh, come back together and are in a very different moment in their lives and are actually not necessarily recognising each other. Uh, I'm interested in, Ben, how you and Rooney work together. Did, you know, did you actually uh, keep a distance in terms of achieving that kind of quality? Or, uh, you know, did you do a lot of work together in terms of talking about the characters and working the characters? Oh, we, we spent some time together um, before we shot just to, you know, just to be around each other and, and feel uh, a little more comfortable. And I think when you have to do something with someone that you have history with and, you know, some kind of meaningful relationship with, just a bit of time really matters. Um, and then we just sort of, you just sort of go for it. I mean, you know what it is you're going to have to do. You know the, the areas you're going to have to do and then in you go. Well, I think actually, I, I think this is important. I, I as a character, right, mm. not as a human, mm. uh, I love him. But I'm not going to tell you how I feel about him as a human because I think that's really central to um, what people take from, you know, I think that's part of the... You know, that's part of the 10 pounds, as mm. it were, of, <laughs> of the watching it. And you don't want to rob those things because I think those things are really, really important in, in storytelling and stuff. Is, it's about what you think about him, you know. Mm. And, but as a character, I love him. Mm. I mean, he's... Yeah. Do I love him? No, I don't love him, no. Um, do I forgive him? Maybe that's the question. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I really don't know. He did something 15 years ago that is unforgivable. Do, uh, do we forgive? I don't know. That's, that's the whole thing. Uh, that's, the, that's the film. Do you forgive? It's interesting, too. Your question is her question. Um, she's desperately trying to find evidence that what happened between them was real. And if, you, if it was real, then he was a good man and, and the love of her life and... Um, that possibility is very painfully still real inside her because it was never resolved. But on, on the other hand, it's uh, he's a, he, he is absolutely a monster who destroyed her life. And if in her worst scenario, if she was one of many, then then he's just chewed her up and spat her out. We tried to well, this is absolutely what David's play does and the, the writing and the screenplay does, but we tried to do it with all aspects of the filmmaking to keep that question on a, on a knife edge and to let people exit the cinema with that question still on their minds, to not solve it. It's her, um, it's her deep ambiguity and their deep ambiguity as characters and we're invited into that. Um, and I've heard from, as we started showing the film, I've heard wildly different reactions from people about whether he is a good man at the end worthy of forgiveness, able to forgive himself, able to move on to, to a more truthful life, possibly with, with his new family, or whether he is still a monster abusing that, that girl upstairs. And the film def delib very deliberately leaves forking paths in that possibility within him. Look, I just, um, you know, as best as I could with, with, with Ruby, um, who is, is the um, younger Una, um, I just tried to keep the atmosphere um, fairly neutral. I mean, because the, the, you know, what hangs over this material is so full on, um, um, you know, we'd met and I'd met with her family and, you know, we'd spoken about, you know, what we were, what we were doing and whatnot. And then outside of that, it was just a case of just going to work and keeping it no big deal. I mean, the stuff that we have to do together is informed a lot by what we know in the story and by place and by recounting. But this, the, the interchanges between us aren't... Uh, n you know, aren't necessarily of, um, of a high intensity of any sort. And I think that was really important because that, um, yeah, that wouldn't, have, that wouldn't have been right, 
in, in all sorts of ways it wouldn't have been right. So, you know, it's, it's the same thing always pretty much. If, if you have any of those types, it's just meat, high, human, high, going to be playing something else, you know, and then, then you go to it and then you let yourself, you just let yourself um, play. Well, I, like I'm a theatre director and I've been directing theatre for 20 years, so I bring all of that experience to it. I bring that experience in sort of unpacking a story, trying to look for the raw ends of a, the raw nerves of a story and in, encouraging actors to go after that and also for, for I hope, very strong image making in the theatre. I, I think that sometimes what, what you recognise in those scenes between the two of them, some of those more claustrophobic scenes, certainly I wasn't trying to block it like theatre. In fact, we didn't really block it. The, the actors just kind of did what they felt was right in those, those, those scenes and we used that as a, as a template. I think possibly what you respond to more in that is the way that the, ca the camera in those scenes is not doing kind of... Uh, later on it does this, but in those early scenes it's not doing a kind of um, shot reverse shot stuff with them and it's, nor is it following them in a kind of handheld way like a, like a boxing match between the two of them to convince you that it's real. There's something in that, that camera that is very formal um, there's a lot of slow push-ins in the DP Thymios Bakatakis's framing and there's something very kind of, this is in the first third of it, very considered and tight, almost as if the, the kind of adrenaline that's hitting the two of them is simultaneously unmooring the camera in a more traditional way of going shot reverse shot. I think also some of that theatrical quality and certainly like when they're behind those boxes, that long, those long slow sh setups of the two of them there, that is a deep recognition of that their, their scenes and those parts of those scenes come from more directly from the play. And the play, as I was talking about earlier, the play is about two people who have a special language between each other because they're locked in a room and they have to use these words to un, un, unpack it. So although this is kind of really stripped of the amount of words that they use in the play, they have a language that is different from other people. They speak differently from how Riz and Rooney speak or, or the scenes with ben and, ben and Ruby or even the scenes in the final third, like when she goes back to Riz's. There's a different atmosphere in those scenes which um, smell more of the play because they have to use the language of the play to get at these hard truths. So I think it's something to do with the special condition of these characters too, why they carry the play on their backs more. Maybe I just jump in quickly to sort of reiterate what, in a way, what I was saying before about wanting to leave this sort of forking endings for the audience. But compared, maybe I know when Ray walks up that that driveway back to his family that a bomb is about to go off, I don't know what's going to happen. We, we just know that something's going to happen. She walks away in, in, into the night and for me something happens and I don't really want to take away the mystery of it because it's deliberately part of it, but there was a, a stage direction in the, the script just about how you know, some load has lifted and I think Rooney does something pretty incredible when she breaks away from from Ben's kiss in those final shots. It's like a thread has been cut. And that thread has bound them so tightly, in a very damaging way, it's bound them very, very tightly. Um, and I think that the breaking of that thread, that small letting of air as she walks down, down the street and walks into the camera at the end is the suggestion for you to continue in your imaginations. Is redemption possible for her? Can she begin to heal? Will her life change? Will she go back to her mum in the same way? Or do you believe that through the course of this day and through kind of hunt, hunting down the past, trying to retrieve the past, digging into it in ugly, uncomfortable ways, whether that something some something has lifted um then i think there's something else at the the very end where the young una played by ruby sitting on the bed at the end turns and looks into the camera and directly looks at the audience at the end there's another step to that whole process beyond what happens to those two walking away where her gaze says don't forget what happened to me um and that's still something that's going to be going on inside both the characters. And I think that Una still walks away with that. But without over psychologizing it, I feel that somehow in this day, she's taken a step towards repair. But other people, I hope, may also have different opinions on it because it's, it's left open. But something changes in that kiss. I don't agree with that. 
Absolutely no. I think that I think the the last shot is is genius, and I think she is caught there forever. And that's that's the. I I didn't write that shot. That was did I write that shot? No, I didn't. No, I didn't write. That that she she's caught there. She's a flying amber. She's never she's never leaving that room. That's me. Sorry. No, no, no. no. Be ben. No, no, I, I, no, I, I defer. Don't, I, I don't defer. defer. Don't defer. <laughs> no, no, I defer not. not. I, I suspect she, I suspect she's staying there too. I, I just, I think damage is damage. That's what I think, and I think you can, but I think damage is damage. I don't think the damage is gone, or that the scar tissue is like lifted and that's also as I say like that, that final shot of the girl still looking there absolutely that's inside her and she'll carry that it's how she learns to live with that girl and what happened between them now and how she learns to sort through that and I think she has a chance having met him again just literally because it was just a, it's just a mess before by having started to sort of sift through the wreckage she starts to maybe have an understanding of it. I'm not after kind of some holy redemption. <laughs> you see the things you find out about a film afterwards. They're just amazing. <laughs> and you ought to be encouraged well, by the fact that, you know, we, see, we don't know. We, well, you know, David I, I know, I knows. know. Thanks. David knows. <laughs> Benedict, David, Ben, thank you so much for an extraordinary film and for being here tonight.